Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. LSU beats Ole Miss 38-21. Leonard Fournette looked like the Leonard Fournette everybody knew and loved. A school record, 284 yards, breaking the record held by Allie Broussard. He said did it against Ole Miss in 04. Fournette all over Ole Miss tonight. And that Tiger defense in the second half again. Doing the deal. I'm Tommy Chrysan, Buddy Sanji. Buddy, how are you? Good to see you, TK. You're all uh, fired up. You had a little baseball on the, on the card tonight. Cubbies win three straight from the Dodgers, so Cleveland and uh, the Cubbies in the World Series. Ohio State gets beat tonight by Penn State. It was a whiteout. TK, 20-point underdogs. Ohio State loses to Penn State. LSU now second week in a row pitching a shutout in the second half. 52 to nothing in the last two weeks in the second half. Fournette, unbelievable with his performance. Uh, I think Coach O is going to mention that they probably had a few more uh, turnovers than they wanted to, but the, the defense got after him in the second half. And uh, we appreciate all of you up, staying up late to, to listen and watch us. That's a, that's a long day for, for college football. Most people have been watching it 12 hours or plus. Louisville, Lamar Action Jackson, once again, doing the Heisman pose. He, uh, he's uh, playing well. And Alabama, unfortunately, TK, uh, just continue to, uh, uh, to get better each and every week. Well, LSU gets the job done. Our phone number, 225-928-4910. We welcome those phone calls. The text message line, uh, we got a text in already, so we got to clean up a few of those turnovers as uh, LSU wins 38-21. to 21. Uh, Great job there by the Tigers. Crowd stayed a little longer than normal. They weren't there at the very end, but the game was in hand, 38-21. A big win for LSU uh, in the West. You see the score on your screen, 38-21, and uh, they, they win going away. A big second half again, buddy. Uh, uh, another thing that I'm sure will get uh, mentioned, TK, uh, between now and, and LSU and Alabama, uh, Coach O made a couple mistakes tonight. Uh, uh, and whether it was Ensminger who called the play or not, but right before half, TK, you're on the 18-yard line. Look, if you're on the 35, I understand maybe trying to score with a minute and 10 left. But, uh, and they teach those offensive linemen, if you're going to get beat, uh, go ahead and hold that guy and not give up a sack. But uh, Maya Tahuma did give up the sack, uh, the fumble, and Ole Miss did get it in the end zone, tied it up 21 all at halftime. And, uh, that was course, a bad call. Bad call there. And Coach O also decided to, to take the football first out of the gate. LSU had two three and outs. Second week in a row, uh, a slow start. But once again, boy, that defense has had two shutouts in the second half the last two weeks. And, you know, once again, TK, a lot of good things, but still a lot of tape to teach from. All right, and you got uh, LSU had 515 yards offense. It did turn it over. Uh, three times, as one of the text messages said, got to clean that up a little bit. But it was a big, big night uh, for LSU. As I'm, uh, got to see who, who we got on the line. Marty, if Marty could let Probably going to be Frank. He usually is our leadoff hitter, but I'm not sure if Frank stayed up. We uh, appreciate, once again, all of you staying up for us on radio, WUBR, and the TuneIn app, uh, and on the, TV on the Pelican. The phone line is 225-928-4910. The text message line is area code 504-689-9246. Frank in Baton Rouge. Frank, good evening. Welcome How to the Post Game Show. How y'all doing tonight, TK and Buddy? And that was a hell of a game. That's what you want to watch. My hat's off to the players, to the coaches, and to Leonard Fournette. Boy, Frank, it was so good to see him. And you know we all get caught up in this, TK. When Darius Geis was doing so many great things, Frank, uh, I, I heard, and, and, and all of us get caught up with it. Man, he's, he's so good. He's faster than Fournette. He hits a f- hole faster than Fournette. All of these other things. But, man, uh, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And uh, it was good to see uh, Leonard Fournette come back out and have that juice and that acceleration explosion through the hole. Uh, the patented stiff arm, TK and Frank, it's become some of uh, his better moves to be able to use that power with his upper body. Uh, but, uh, you know, Frank, let's uh, also uh, uh, be cognizant of the fact that uh, I'm not so sure how many yards you'll get uh, running like that against Alabama. But for tonight, it's something certainly to be good, uh, happy about and be glad about. But 
Uh, it, TK, you could tell, Fournette had a little juice in his step and, and certainly bode well for him sitting out and getting that ankle. I well. think what was the best thing you saw if you're an LSU fan about Leonard Fournette other than the 284 yards, the, the two times he got loose, nobody ran him down. So, yeah. you know, he if he wasn't 100%, he was very close to it. I thought it should have been penalties on the defensive back. Both times he pushed Fournette after the Fournette was over the goal line. I can't believe Rhett didn't throw a penalty. That wasn't a hard push, but it was something that, you know, if you're a Tiger fan, you don't want him to hurt an ankle or a hamstring because somebody's pushing him when the play is basically over. Buddy, uh, go ahead, Frank, and then we got I a text. I was to say, it was a hell of a game, and I, I think now LSU might have a chance against Alabama. I don't, I'm not expecting them to win, and if they don't win, I'm not going to hold it against the coach or the player because Alabama's a hell of a team. Well, to me, watching a lot of football, uh, TK and Frank, Alabama is on the, their own level. Now, I'm not going to uh, regurgitate what uh, Paul Feinbaum uh, said and said they could beat the Cleveland Browns. I think that's a little ludicrous when you jump Paul's over Paul's embarrassing himself to say that. That, 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 right. that hoop. But right now, to me, they look like Frank and TK on a different level with, anybody, with everybody else in college football. They did lose Eddie Jackson, a big part of their secondary, and a great punt returner. Once again, TK, you text me, Jonathan Allen, how many times it, has this guy picked he's up He's got two and, touchdowns and this year, in? and the running back from Stamp and McCaffrey, who was a Heisman finalist last year, has two. Frank, I've never seen so many non-offensive touchdowns uh, in a year than what Bama's having this year. Well, y'all have a good – I'm going to have to go because y'all have a good night. Thank okay, you, buddy. Frank. Buddy, a text message question. Did this put Leonard Fournette back in the Heisman race? I, I don't think so. I, I know Brent uh, Musburger mentioned that. But well, just, I'll say this. He set out too many games. I'll say this. Lamar well, Jackson's a, well, a shoe-in. I'll say this. Well, I mean, you know, you're going to have four or five people go to New York. I certainly don't think he hurt that cause oh, to no, maybe he get in it. Cause. Now, if he gets 150 or more against Bama and they beat Bama, he's definitely back in the race. And here's another thought I had while I'm watching Fournette do everything tonight. Uh -huh. You know, we kept saying for the last month, you know, Geis is an adequate backup. He's done a great job. And Geis did. He absolutely did. But then you saw tonight why Geis was the backup because Fournette is that much better. You know, look, at this point, I, I just hope people realize that you, and this is kind of a, a weird thing to say, but it's the truth. Do you realize there's only two more opportunities to, to watch Leonard Fournette and Tiger Stadium, too? That's, That's it. Right. Uh, in two weeks against Alabama, we expect it to be released on Monday. It's been leaked by uh, Vern Lundquist already in radio interviews that they are coming to Baton Rouge at 7 o'clock on that CBS uh, primetime game. And, uh, look, if he gets 100 yards against uh, Alabama, that would say a lot because Bama's uh, front seven is just outstanding. But, uh, personally, I don't think Leonard can get there unless – uh, he, he averages uh, 150 the rest of the way, and they win out. Well, I'm not saying he's back in the race, but he certainly he's in that others receiving votes right now. You yeah. know, you got the other ones down there, and they're going to see what they do the rest of the way. I definitely think it, it's some of that. All right, let's see. Um, and he'll be on a lot of the highlight reels uh, throughout Tra the country. Travante Valentine did not play. No. Nope. Um, I didn't see John David Moore, the fullback. Putting, putting pressure on Kelly in the third quarter got him rattled. That's a good point by LSU's defensive line. Good. Tom Herman's sweepstakes may not be so interesting. They got beat again. They got yep. beat by SMU of all bad, people. A bad beating. Yeah. Um, give but Let's see here. Okay. Um, so there you have it. You've got the uh, – Tigers winning 38-21. What a, what a game, uh, a win uh, for Coach Orgeron. 3-0 and in the season of Orgeron now, as they're calling it. We're going to take a break. Our phone number, 225-928-4910. Text message line, 504-689-9246. As we will uh, continue with your phone calls and more still to come, reports from the stadium. Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com a little bit later. Followed by Ronnie Ransom, Sports Shorts Radio, Sports Shorts TV. With Buddy Sanji, I'm Tommy Christ saying final score from Tiger Stadium. LSU 38, Ole Miss 21. It's over, and uh, Ole Miss can go you know where. We'll be right back after this pause. Stay with us. Here at 
Juva Me Medical, we strive to accomplish a more youthful you. We specialize in the most advanced techniques of testosterone replacement therapy in men, bioidentical hormone replacement in women, IV therapy, and nutritional support along with the state-of-the-art cosmetics procedures. Experience a network of trainers and health coaches offering diet and nutritional plans tailored to you. Call us today to schedule your free consultation to discuss your individual needs and goals. Look like you live, live younger. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Hello, my name is Debbie. Welcome to Debbie's Bridal of Formal Affair. My name is Raven. I work at Debbie's Bridal and she makes your dreams come true. Acord Eye Clinic Vision Source is located on Perkins Road in Baton Rouge, offering full-service optical and lab work. Dr. Shonda Acord and the professionally trained staff pride themselves on service, complete eye exams, help with contact lenses, and selection of frames featuring Silhouette, Gucci, Jimmy Choo, and all the top lines. State-of-the-art equipment including OptiMap, which digitally photographs your retina. Call Acord Eye Clinic for an appointment. 225-767-3937. That's 225-767-3937. Visit the website, visionsource-br.com. All patients of all ages are welcome. Acord Eye Clinic, Vision Source. Continue with the Pelican Sports post game show. The phone number 225 928 4910. Text message line is area code 504 689 9246. Coming at you radio, television, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans, all over the world on the internet. Uh, buddy, here's an interesting text message. When we won under less miles, I wasn't happy. Winning with Coach O is fun. Your reaction to that statement? Well, I definitely think that uh, we all know those first four games this year were just brutal. They were, they were just so uh, boring and unimaginative, and you could tell that the talent was not being utilized. And um, uh, I, I think there's a lot of validity to what uh, that, uh, that uh, text message uh, said. Uh, I'm, I'm getting it from, from everybody, uh, TK, the higher-ups, the the mamas and daddies, the players, the, the fans, the media, everybody. It is more entertaining. I think that Coach O is going to stress that the fact that uh, they've got to protect the football. Uh, we yeah, just three turnovers is not good. We just talked about it, though, in, in, in the break. Uh, Alabama is scoring so many touchdowns, not even on the offensive end of things. So they've got to clean up there. I thought Etling had a few mistakes today that uh, he could have eliminated. Uh, he's got to learn from it. I mean, you he's know, he's a you tough had, son of a gun. Oh yeah, he took a shot when he got. Uh, I, th I didn't know he was coming back in. I texted you said Harris might be in because you know his head snapped, and of course you could see it on the replay, and then it hit the ground. So. And they finally got what I've been asking for, TK. Uh, we finally got a little guys and Fournette in the same backfield. They opened up the game for that. <laughs> didn't really do a lot with it, but uh, I think that as uh, they have two weeks to get ready, I guess what I'm saying, folks, is this. LSU is going to have to play with a little more ball security. I was happy to see them a little more aggressive on defense, starting to force some turnovers. How many did LSU have on the takeaway? Two. Two. And they had a couple that were there was, almost. There was a pick. And a, yeah. 
right? Uh, Dante Jackson was Jackson a Jackson had a pick. It was that was an underthrown ball because yeah, he, yeah. he can't cover but, anybody. But uh, look, uh, they're, they're coming around. There were two interceptions. Uh, Kobe Delahousey, Duke Rowley had the other one. Uh, Kobe right. Delahousey did uh, did a good job on uh, on the 45 uh, yard field goal. Uh, man, listen, uh, let's give uh, the lefty uh, punter credit. He's kicked pretty darn good. He's done since about the second week, and they got away from that crazy uh, rugby style punting. But I, I still have this question, TK, as to, and, and we're going to find out in two weeks from tonight, can LSU play at the line of scrimmage with the big boys, the offensive line and the defensive line, and uh, if they can, you know, we just saw Penn State pull a, as a 20-point underdog at home in a whiteout, upset Urban Meyer and Ohio State. Uh, I, you know, I text you. I think LSU is going to be a 10 or 11 point. 14. Throw. Bama will be a 14 point favorite. You, Write it down. You got that right. Uh, it's my guess. Oh, your guess. Okay. Guess. Okay. All right. And, and and again, the spread may not come out for a week. Well, yeah, you're right. They I both mean, have an open, open date, yeah. but they yeah. usually don't put them out that early. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because they got to put all it's the other ones out. It's definitely going to be double digits. Yes, I'll go with that, but I, I I got inside info on the 14, buddy. Okay, well. I got a text message question. Where was Michael Divinity? Michael Divinity has not really been playing much lately. Um, Tayshawn Bowers uh, been playing a lot, and you know that linebacker doesn't play a lot when you're in the nickel and when you're playing – all of these uh, offenses like Ole Miss and Texas A&M and all the spread teams, uh, Divinity doesn't get on the field a bunch. Hey, uh, Kendall Beckwith, uh, really glad he came back. He's a hell of a football player. I he think could. he's raised his stock in the NFL, too. Uh, Jamal Adams once again. And, hey, let's give them credit. You know, I talked all week about it. You've got to shut down Evan Ingram. And I thought they did a great job of stopping number 17 today. And I thought they did a good job containing Kelly. I mean, Kelly's dangerous. You know, you're not going to stop. Chad Kelly, you know, you're not going to stifle him into nothing. He's too good, okay? But I think in the big picture, they did a good job against him. And, and look, uh, as we said, I think everybody will agree that Coach O's wrong. And I, I, this is what everybody likes about Coach O. And, and he's having his press conference right now, but I can guarantee you he will go in there and take the blame for throwing the ball on first down at the 18-yard line with a minute 10 left, and he, he'll say, that's on me. That's on me. We got to be smarter than that. Maya Tahuma right. got beat by Haynes, and uh, it, it could have been. Uh, that like might have a, been the only play Haynes made all night. Well, it, but it, it it could have been an injury, and you got to you got to keep Danny Etling healthy. There's no doubt. I, about I, that. I talked about they limited Chad Kelly. He was 20 of 33 for 218 yards. That's not, not bad. great. One touchdown, two picks. He did rush for 56 yards on 12 carries. So you know, Long was only 11. So. I think they contain Chad Kelly, and that could be a reason that they blanked Ole Miss in the second half. Because Ole Miss, I would have to think, you know, they come out. That point spread was up. I saw it as high as eight and eight and a half before the kickoff. Yeah. Danny right. Etlin on the other end, 19 of 28 for 204, one touchdown, one pick. And then Leonard Fournette, 16 carries, 284 yards, three touchdowns. A text message, want to know why they pulled him out a little shy of 300. I, I did hear uh, Chris Blair and Doug Morrow on my way to the studio. There have been five guys that have rushed for 300 yards in the SEC, and two people did 321. I don't know. Right. I, I think a that. guy from Kentucky did that. And a I guy think. from Georgia, I think, a yeah. long, long time ago. Long well, time I think ago. they were just But anyway, so no, no, and again, Fournette's going to be, I would guess he's going to be a little sore tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, he hadn't played football in a little while. It, not just maybe his ankle, but also, you know, Sure. He, he got hit a bunch, a couple times, got stopped for no gain or even a loss of yardage. All right, let's go to Bill and Gonzalez. Bill, you're on the post-game show. Yeah. Hi, this is Bill again. And I'm just uh, calling to say, you know, Ole Miss got what they deserve, man, wearing them doggone red jerseys in Tiger Stadium, eh? Uh, how about those powder blue helmets, Bill? Yeah, but... Uh, Hey, Bill, it, it's Sunday morning. Give me a go to hell, Ole Miss. Go to hell, Ole Miss. Go to hell. There you go. Hey, hey, look. Uh, no, my uh, dad was from Mississippi, and he brainwashed my little brother. And, uh, <laughs> you know, them people, they wear them red jerseys when they smell blood in the water. And well, they got to, you know, they, so I think they felt like from last year and so forth that we wouldn't be much. They knew we would a little bit better, but they didn't know how much. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to go back to last week's game with Southern Miss. These boys didn't put their heads in 
the sand and whatever and just lay down and die. And that when the first half was so sluggish for him. And then this week, you know, I was kind of figuring they had to have something else in mind after the first two drives when they were three and out. But uh, when they almost got their field goal on their second drive, I told my wife, the Tigers got them. If y'all remember that last championship, well, the second to last when they win, when they beat Ohio State, it was 10 nothing in the first quarter, and then the Tigers came back and roared. And I'm not saying bring on Bama. All I'm saying is they come in here, and I think the Tigers are going to give a good account of themselves. And I tell you what, this might be the year we start changing some of that mojo on that roll tide stuff. What y'all think about that? Well, Bill, you can say bring on Bama because that's what's next. In Baton Rouge two weeks from tonight, going to be all indications ought to be a 7 o'clock kickoff, uh, primetime CBS TV, uh, as it's been for many, many years in a row now. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, they have an open date. LSU has an open date. It's almost like the old days in the Super Bowl. you got two weeks to build up for it. You know, Bill, I think what, what I'm hearing a lot during the game, and, boy, there was a lot of freak out at the beginning when it was 10 nothing. And yeah, uh, I didn't Co- know if they were going to get bowl eligible. Co- Coach, <laughs> I had a buddy of mine text me that. But, uh, I did. Uh, oh, that was you. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to say anything. But Coach O, Bill. Well, if they lost tonight, that would have been a question. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Coach O, when it gets the grain, generally coaches, when you win the toss, go on defense first. And I think he wanted to get the bad start from last week. Yeah, I think he wanted to get Fournette on the field. Well, but he wanted to get, get the guys to start a little quicker. Two, three, and out, you're down 10 nothing. Uh, they played really well from there. I think he will also admit that that was a faux pas, Bill. You've got to admit, a minute 10, and I love trying to score as much as anybody before halftime, but when you're on the 18-yard line, you run the ball, and if you break one, yeah, then you Yeah, if you, you get try. 15 or 20 yards, then right. you put it yeah, up in the air. But, but you don't go back to pass and, yeah, that, and give up that play. I mean, they'll learn from that. what they had to do, and it was great. Thank right, you, Bill. Bill. Thank you, Bill. Take care, man. Okay. Appreciate it. Let's go to Mark in Baton Rouge. Mark, you're on the postgame show. Hey, guys, listen, I wanted to ask uh, actually two questions, and maybe you can answer them for me. I'm going to actually ask the questions and then hang up, uh, listen for your answers. First, do you think we've uh, turned the corner yet with the quarterback? Uh, I think we've still got a quarterback problem, but I like your insight on it. The other thing is a little bit more uh, um, sort of sports-related, but it it goes to the bigger problem. I just watched an interview with uh, Leonard Fournette and they asked him about how they uh, uh, how they were dealing with the loss of Les Miles, and uh, they said they. Re- I mean, he said he very much. They all love him, and that they really uh, miss him a lot. And I just don't get why this city, uh, and, and maybe I'm just wrong, um, why the city as a whole has to keep crashing on the guy. Um, let you guys answer that question because it really is. I, I'll answer it right now. I, I would like to know who asked that question because I think that's a ridiculous question after Fournette sets a school record in an SEC win. That, that's a question you don't ask after the game, in well, my opinion. But ESPN. the reporter can ask whoever the, whatever they want. But I think that, that that's, uh, that's a question you ask that you almost can't get a good answer for. And that's unfair. Okay. In my opinion, that's unfair by whoever asked that. Again, that's my opinion. Yeah, and, and Mark, it. here's uh, I just, my take. I just don't know whether there's any productivity in, you know, consistent. I heard the other gentleman tell uh, State that he was, uh, um, you know, under a, a Miles win, he just didn't feel great, and under uh, Coach O win, he feels tremendous. I, I don't get that. I, I really am confused. Well, no, he's just That's telling you what he thought. of the accomplishments that Miles has made. But, Mark, this is entertainment, my man, and, and people go to the games to feel good in their belly about their team, and as I was saying a, a caller a couple of weeks ago, when you watch everybody play and then you watch LSU at 8.15 at night, you have an idea of how LSU stacked up to all the teams that played today. And with less, let's be honest, Mark, there were a lot of games that were closer than they should have been because of his propensity to want to run it and be conservative on offense. Now, the, the plays are very similar if we... We go back to Fournette and what he scored on. A lot of those tossbacks uh, to him over right tackle were what they ran. And so there's a lot of similarity. Uh, I, I don't think people are bashing Les. Uh, look, everybody realizes what Les Miles did. And he now, came back. I, I'm getting a clarification here that Fournette brought up Miles' name. 
while talking about what it's been for him like the last month when he didn't play, and the ESPN reporter followed it up with a question, okay? But so, those guys that, were recruited that's by why I shouldn't have said what I said yeah. until I knew more information, but uh, but I'm going back to what Mark's saying, too. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I think if a guy wants to say watching Les Miles win wasn't fun and, for, and, and Orgeron is, I think that's an okay comment because he's made a comparison of, of how he feels about watching the football team. Yeah. But look, he, they, he recruited all those guys. He's father figures. Those guys love him, and he loves all those players. And you got to feel like Mark uh, Les is watching these games and, and wondering uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. But uh, listen, I, I think everybody we talk to, whether it's on TV or radio, appreciates what Les did for following a legend in, in Nick Saban. And, and Nick and Mark Emmert got this sleeping giant of LSU to wake up and to be in the mix and win championships again. And for 11 darn years, Les Miles and his program did a hell of a job of staying in that conversation. And now uh, he was asked to change, and he wouldn't change on offense. And, and unfortunately, Mark, in business and in big-time business, which is what LSU football is, he got the pink slip. Mark, what was your other question? I just wanted you to address the quarterback question. I appreciate you all what you do every game. Okay, Thank you, Mark. Mark. Uh, certainly, I think Danny Etling, you know, it's his job. He has improved. No no he has improved every week, I think. He has made mistakes every week. Most quarterbacks do make mistakes. Uh, so, you know, it's one thing, you know, when you can improve and you're winning and you can overcome the mistakes or the adversity, as a coach would like to call it, adversity. They don't want to use the word mistake playing on words there. But Antlin's going to have to get better. There's four more games after the open date. All ranked teams, I mean, you know, it, it, it's going to be a daunting task, and he's going to have to be at his very best. But he's, he's clearly the best quarterback they have in, no, I don't, in the I don't uniform. think there's any question about that. Right. But on one of his INTs, Shark was open, and he didn't get the football there. Now, let's be well, cognizant. Again, it's going it, He it's doesn't have happen. the arm, though, to throw the ball like Brandon Harris, so he does throw with a little bit of a different trajectory. He doesn't throw the deep ball as but well. But I think he overcomes Brandon. that when, by checking down the receiver, oh, checking no down doubt. the tight there's ends. There's no doubt. But and, he's going to have to play mighty good against Alabama. We had a text message on the total yards. LSU, 515 yards offense. That was 311 rushing, 204 passing. And uh, Ole Miss, a total of 325. That was 218 passing. 107 rushing. We're going to take another break, come back and continue with your phone calls, your text messages. Keep it jumping. LSU wins 38-21. Open date next week. Bama in two weeks. Going to probably be a 7 o'clock kickoff on CBS. Don't forget the uh, TV portion of this program. We are on radio and TV. Repeat Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Uh, you can get up and check it out in case you missed some of it. Or those of you that may be listening on the smartphone or the Internet, you can watch it on TV tomorrow morning. Buddy Sanji, Tommy Christ, and final score, LSU 38, Ole Miss 21. We'll be back with more right here on the Pelican Sports Post Game Show on Pelican Sports TV. Since 1986, the family dental practice of Dr. Farrell Frugier, with state-of-the-art building and technology, and our highly trained staff have been dedicated to providing care and treatment to our patients of all ages. The experience and advanced training in cosmetic and restorative dentistry, TMJ, and treatment of snoring and sleep apnea allows Dr. Frugier to assist you in achieving the best in dental health. Call us today at 225-292-9700 to schedule your initial evaluation because we know how to make you smile. Friends, family, and community in surrounding parishes who have lost vehicles due to the flood. North American Auto Group is here to help. We have discounted over 400 pre-owned vehicles with no water damage. In addition, we have lenders offering disaster relief financing programs. We will also help you with your insurance and gap claims. Shop online at NorthAmericanAutoGroup.com or visit us at one of our four locations in Baton Rouge and Gonzales. North American Auto Group, we make it easy. Cypress Lake Apartments are conveniently located off Segan Lane in Baton Rouge. Come see this community, which has many amenities including swimming pools, fitness room, playground, and much more. Beautiful views of Cypress Lake. 
one, two, three bedroom apartments are available, stop by and see Cypress Lake Apartments. Give them a call at 225-293-6789 or visit online cypresslake-apartments.net. Attention small business owners. Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes, you're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-552-8621. We continue with the post-game show. Let's go to Emil in Plaquemine. Emil, you're on the post-game show. Yes, how you doing? Good. About uh, the LSU defense, uh, I feel the LSU defense is a is a great part of the game. And uh, do you think that the defense can win championships? Like, for example, can they win the SEC championship? If they win out, they'll be in Atlanta. I, Emil, if you're asking me this year, I just don't think they've got enough guys that throw people around at the line of scrimmage. Watching Alabama, they've got five or six studs on the D-line. Uh, Gilmore is not a dominating nose guard. You didn't really have uh, Ed Edwin Alexander play tonight. Trevante Valentine, he played most of it. Gotcha had a good game. Key has held a block. Lewis Neal does a good job. But, uh, uh, you know, and they're not covered good enough to win championships. Emil, uh, three pass interference calls. On Dante Jackson, although we talked during the break, two of the three were probably ticky-tack calls. Um, but this year, TK, um, I would say LSU would have to play a darn near perfect game to beat Alabama unless they force turnovers and get into the head of Jalen Hurts, who's a true freshman, and get him out of his comfort zone. But watching Alabama, the way they're running the ball downhill, Emil, uh, Beckwith and that defense are going to have to do a better job. Ole Miss got uh, yardage right up the gut. Uh, Chad Kelly got some yards. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a championship defense, even though they're, they're, they're good. I just don't think they're great this year, Emil. Well, they've given up seven touchdowns in seven games, and that leads the nation. But as we know, and we keep saying this, but it's true, the competition level goes up significantly. Buddy, I'm going to go back to what I said last week. But they gave up before. two tonight, so that's eight. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to go back to what I said the week before. The only team that can beat Alabama is Alabama, mm -hmm. as far as I've seen through there, what I've seen to them this year. And I, I've watched them a good bit. So, But LSU has to play a role in that. Two weeks from now, it's going to be a good one. Emil, what's your thought on that? Did you hang up? Uh, no, I was just asking the question. Uh, thank you for your information. And uh, What do you think about the defense? Is it good enough? Well, uh, I think we can play better. Yeah. I think we have one of the best uh, young defensive coordinators in the country. Sure. We are very fortunate to have the defense coordinator, and we all do have a good defense, and, uh, you know, we could uh, – well, we can play against Alabama. Time will tell. Yeah, I, I think the key there, TK, and uh, watching them, uh, they they've got two or three running backs that really, really run downhill. And Emil, um, they're going to have to do something special to stop Jalen Hurts, his kid. Now, let let's be honest. This is going to be the most boisterous, loud crowd. You got two weeks to build up this game. LSU is going to move up to about number 20 in the polls. Alabama, obviously, is going to be one. Michigan's going to be two. Clemson will be three. Washington will probably be four. Right. 
Ohio State drops down, A&M drops down. Uh, Emil, I, I think the, the key thing with beating Alabama will be on first down. You can't give them five yards a pop. If you can get them in second and long and third and long, then you got guys like Arden Key and Lewis Neal who can pin their ears back and go get Hurts. Hurts is not that great a passer. Uh, we know that, but boy, when he scampers, he's just got a nose to avoid and escape and get in the end zone. Uh, and then once again, they're scoring with their defense, TK and Emil. But uh, I think you still have two weeks. And look, we saw Penn State do it tonight. Now I'm watching LSU, and when Penn State came back, I was flipping back and forth. But uh, they were a 20-point dog, Emil, playing Ohio State, and they pulled the upset. Uh, I'd have to say it would be a special night, and gosh, TK and Emil, LSU is due to get a break or two. But I just hope those referees that, um, that, that uh, get those checks signed in the state of Alabama, I, I hope that uh, they have a fair and square game because I was watching Texas A&M and Alabama, Emil, and uh, uh, I know those Texas A&M Aggies uh, know what it's like to, to see a little bias. Well, uh, I tell you, I've been watching uh, LSU and Alabama play, and uh, Alabama beat you with a little short pass right over the line of scrimmage. Sure. Do that big fullback, and after that, we can't stop them. And the tight end, yeah. Yes. Well, y'all have a great day. And, uh, Thank you, Emil. Call. Appreciate Happy Sunday. Appreciate the call, Emil. Uh, yeah, do you, the question on the text message line, do you think our defense can stop Bama? You were talking about it. Hey, it's going to take a, a gallant effort against Alabama. It's the number one team in the nation. they got a 20-game winning streak. I mean, we know all that. But LSU under Ed Orgeron, the season of Orgeron, as they're calling it, you know, they're 3-0. and You can only beat who's on the other sideline, and LSU has done that. And it was a big win tonight for a lot of reasons. Coach Orgeron downplayed the whole thing. I used to coach at Ole Miss till. He said, it's all about LSU. It's all about the LSU Tigers because that's what he was supposed to do. But I guarantee you, he, when he puts his head on the pillow tonight, it's going to be a little special moment where he's going to say, hey, we beat Ole Miss, and that's a good thing. Uh, he admitted during the week that you know, he made some mistakes there that he learned from. But that's what it's all about. There's no, no football team plays a perfect game. you got to learn from the mistakes. And LSU, I think, has got to continue to do that. And I will add one little tidbit to that, TK. If you look at the last two times LSU played Alabama and Tiger Stadium, they played with them man per man every play at the line of scrimmage. They should have won in 12 and should have won in 14. But, boy, watching Alabama, they just so good at the line of scrimmage, opening up holes. And in that front seven, they're putting a lot of pressure. You would think Coach Ensminger would get the ball out of the hands of Danny Etlin very quickly. So a lot of short stuff. But uh, they got two weeks to, to, to get ready for that. We'll enjoy this one tonight. Let's go to Paul in Shreveport. Paul, you're on the post game show. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How y'all doing this morning? Paul, how about that brother of yours? 38 21. You have to give him a shout out. But I, I tell you what, a shout out. Somebody He's hit the score on the nose in your now, contest. Yeah, huh? this right. Paul's brother, Butch, uh, who we see on Friday sometimes at Sullivan's. Nailed it. He gets a box of sausage and two packs of boudin. So uh, if, you, uh, if you uh, if you talk to him, crowd, it'd be a winner. tell him a and, great job uh, on the pick. What do you think about that offense? Over 500 yards, right? 515 yards, 311 rushing, 204 passing. Paul, uh, it, it hit me when Fournette made the second long run. TK and Paul, I said, you know, this has been such a crazy fractured year with so many things happened, but you're watching greatness. And I don't know where he will end in the annals of LSU as far as the stats go and all that, but truly one of the greatest run backs of all time. And boy, wasn't it great to see him, A, come back, hit the hole like that. But as TK mentioned a couple of times uh, already tonight, Paul, good to see him not get caught. Now, I don't know if he'll have those kind of alleys in that kind of space against Alabama, probably not. But I think this was good for everybody, including uh, Leonard, because you know, TK, you got a lingering ankle injury and you feel like you're never going to be the same. He it, had it, to feel like it was old Leonard tonight. As good as Fournette has been, okay, I'm going to make a pretty profound statement here. As good as he's been his entire career before tonight, tonight he, to me, looked like, the two guys who I think are the greatest two running backs in the history of the conference, and that's Bo Jackson and Herschel Walker. Tonight, wow. he looked like the guys right on there. the field. He looked like those guys tonight. And and let's see if he can get 100 yards against Alabama in two weeks. Uh, look, Billy Cannon, 
the, the only Heisman Trophy winner has said it often, Paul. Uh, when he votes for the Heisman, and he is a voter, you vote for the guy who does the best in the big games. And Leonard, you've got to feel in his belly, Paul, after last year what happened. Leonard Fournette's going to be sky high. Hey, Paul, how was the crowd? Was it good enough for you? Uh, the crowd was excellent. The, uh, uh, at the very end, you know it was a good crowd when it took you forever to get out of the stadium, which I'll, I'll gladly take that every game. Uh, everybody was into it. I could only imagine how the Alabama game is going to be now. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Uh, That'll be a tough ticket. It was uh, electric uh, before the game. Walked throughout the campus a couple of times. Everybody was pumped. It is going to be a crazy scene in two weeks, isn't it? And, and you got two weeks to clean up, TK. I know Coach O is going to talk about uh, the turnovers. And, look, Danny, Danny's not going to be able to throw a couple of interceptions against Alabama. Now, look, them losing – their star DB and their punt returner, uh, LSU's going to have to throw the ball. And I think Coach Ensminger will probably throw the ball to set up the run against uh, Alabama. Hey, you didn't see much of it tonight, TK and Paul, but I still like the potential when you have Geis and Fournette in the same backfield. One can go in motion. One can be a decoy. Uh, a well, lot that of would have passed Fournette caught in the flat. He, lined, he was in the fullback, like in the H-back yeah, spot, yeah. And, and they didn't have nobody covering him. Right, normally that right. guy in the LSU offense doesn't run out in the flat. And I think that was a 22-yard gain or something. But not going to be able to give the football away. But, uh, Paul, I think most people are excited of the progress. And I think, TK and Paul, here's the key. They're getting better each week. Now, this is the second week in a row, uh, and I know he's got to be asked about it uh, coming up here with the media, but, Paul, this is the second week in a row LSU put a goose egg uh, on, the, on the board for the, the opposition with their defense in the second half. half. Last week it was yeah. 35 to nothing. Tonight it was 17 to nothing. That's plenty of good stuff you can build on. I would like to see uh, Danny Adling run the ball and not hold it. Can you no, 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 no. You don't want him running the yeah. ball. Well, if he if everybody's covered and he sits there and takes a hit like he did, I'd rather him at least be running forward than getting blindsided. Uh, there he he doesn't even run the ball. There's no threat of him running the ball. Well, he and did earlier and he took some shots, Paul. Yeah, but you don't want him running the ball. Yeah. You got nothing behind him. Yeah, you you want to make sure that he look. I'd rather him throw it uh, throw it away if he's going to get uh, the yeah. run of the punishment. And let me tell you what, those that's Alabama that's guys healed. can all run. So. Hey, uh, Paul, uh, what, what do you think about the defense? Is it championship quality, or or you think that they're missing a stud or two? You know, this better be championship quality because next year, uh, how many starters are going to be back? <laughs> I know you're, you're rotating a lot of players, but this defense has to do it this year. And you still only allowed eight touchdowns, right, the entire season? That's correct. Hey, how many points did this Ole Miss team put on Alabama? Uh, they had uh, 43 against Bama. They got beat 48-43. They came back late, yeah. And Anley, uh, Danny Adley gave him a touchdown when he fumbled on our 10-yard line. Um, if it wasn't for that, I think we'd have still held him to that one touchdown. Well, I'm going to blame that on Maya Tahuma for missing his block. He threw a lookout block. Well, they shot the ball and he turned Paul, and yelled, look out. Paul, <laughs> Paul, when you're playing left tackle or right tackle and your guy's getting in, you're, you're deep in your own territory. You grab that guy, and so what if you get a holding call? Yeah, you don't, you don't let him get a clean shot on Danny Etling, and I know Coach Grimes will, will clean that up. But uh, I, I tell you, they've got a chance, but they're going to have to play a, a little bit better and a little bit smarter. Uh, Coach O may have made a mistake there also throwing the ball with a minute 10 left and half uh, on your 18-yard yeah, line. Good. He probably should have been running the football, and that's what people like about Ed Ogeron. He's very honest. Is the, uh, is the offensive line going to be healthy uh, each position as the beginning of the season for the Alabama game? What have y'all heard as far as Toby in? Weathersby yeah. did come back to practice this week, so Toby Weathersby, TK and Paul, could be a guy that could be ready to go at right tackle. Of course, Tahuma's played tackle and inside at the guard spots. Uh, I think that the Posick will be at center, Clapp will be at left guard, K.J. Malone at left tackle. Uh, Josh Butte at right guard, and, and we'll see if it's Toby Weathersby or Maya Tahuma at right tackle. But they should be as healthy as they've been since the start yeah. of the season. All right, Paul. Hey, Paul, tell yeah, Butch uh, he's the man. He's got the crystal ball tonight. Oh, Butch is the man. He, he reminded me as soon as I saw him uh, 
I met back up with him at the end of the game. He said, what what I tell Buddy? Tell him I'm going to have some sausage for him in two weeks. All right. Hey, y'all, uh, good morning, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all hey. have a great rest of the day. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Paul. Yeah, rest of the Sunday. Uh, here's a text message. LSU is not going to be competing for the titles in a few years, for a few years at least. This is a rebuilding job. All that's gone down. All the players that's gone and the schedule next year, eight and four, would be great next year. That's a text. Oh message. man, I'll tell you what, TK. The the last seven games for next year's schedule are brutal. I have never seen LSU dealt uh, this tough a hand. And of course, one of those things is now you lost the home game with Florida because of, of this year's craziness. Two quick questions before we go to break. Then we're going to go to Brian Lazar at Tiger Stadium, find out what Coach Orgeron said. Uh, first, do we lose four nets in the draft? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, second, what do you think the spread against Bama will be? I think Bama will be a 14-point favorite. Buddy thinks 10-11. Uh, let's go 12, 12 to uh, 12 and a half. In double digits, I'm going to go 14. I'm thinking they were 18-point favorites at home yeah. against a and I'm a, And A&M was ranked higher than what LSU is right now. I'm going to go 14 in Tiger Stadium, and, and, and we'll see how that uh plays out. I think we, we were both kind of close last uh, week yeah. for the opening line with Ole Miss. As soon as they announced yeah. Fournette was coming back, the line jumped up, and it continued to climb. I saw eight, eight and a half before kickoff tonight. And, and Leonard's going to go uh, in the top six or seven picks. Uh, you know, running backs are not picked as high as some of the other positions, but uh, Leonard Fournette is definitely going to be a, a high draft pick, and and uh, you got to give him a lot of credit, TK, and the way they have been smart with his ankles and his body. But look, deep down inside, you know, and Leonard Fournette won't say it, but you know that is the game he has circled because of what happened Well, he's got two. I, again, he's going to be sore tomorrow, not just his ankle, but his body from getting hit a little bit for the first time in a month. But he got two weeks before the next game. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to go to Tiger Stadium. We're going to connect with Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com. Uh, number one, he's going to tell us what Coach Orgeron said, any players he talked to, and of course he'll tell you everything that's happening at TigerBait.com. Final score, LSU 38, Ole Miss 21. Buddy Sanji, Tommy Chrysan on the radio to TV. Stay with us. we got more to Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Don't let bugs bug you anymore. Call the bug man today. And for termite protection, go green with Centricot. If it's good enough for Lady Liberty and the White House, then it's good enough for you. Eliminate the colony and eliminate termites for good. Call 923-BUGS today. Perkins Road Veterinary Hospital is a full-service veterinary hospital committed to your pet's health. We offer advanced diagnostic and therapeutic medical services, laser surgery, dog and cat diets, and treats along with stress-free boarding. Dr. Richie sees patients for routine checkups to keep your loved ones happy, also advanced medical and surgical cases. We have separate condos for cat boarding and large climate controlled canine boarding. Our boarding dogs get to have fun in a very large play yard several times a day. Laser therapy is a service that we offer to heal wounds and help our patients that suffer from chronic pain. Laser therapy is a wonderful adjunct treatment for neurologic and arthritic pain with no side effects. Your pets are family members and deserve the best and highest quality of care. Dr. Ritchie and his staff greatly respect the human-animal bond and are committed to exceeding your expectations. Here at Rejuva Me Medical, we strive to accomplish a more youthful you. We specialize in the most advanced techniques of testosterone replacement therapy in men, bioidentical hormone replacement in women, IV therapy, and nutritional support along with the state-of-the-art cosmetics procedures. Experience a network of trainers and health coaches offering diet and nutritional plans tailored to you. Call us today to schedule your free consultation to discuss your individual needs and goals. Look like you live, live younger. i 
continue with the Pelican Sports post game show. Buddy Sanji, Tommy Chrysan. Final score LSU 38, Ole Miss 21. It's a done deal. Now we go to Tiger Stadium to visit with Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Good. How you guys doing? What did Coach Orgeron have to say after the game? Well, he just said it was a tremendous win. Uh, you know, certainly it's pretty easy. You know, Leonard Fournette, he said, I think he's the best player in the country. I've never been around somebody like that. Uh, glad I had him on, on my side. And, uh, and then obviously he talked about how well the, you know, the defense uh, settled down, made some adjustments. He praised, you know, Dave Aranda for what, what he did. Uh, you know, he says it was a, a, a chess match between Aranda and, and Hugh Freeze, and Ole Miss was doing things at the line of scrimmage, changing calls, and Aranda was doing the same thing. And, you know, listening to what a lot of the LSU players were saying, uh, you know, they had to get used to the speed of the game, and, you know, Ole Miss really hurt them on their first possession. You could tell the, the quick tempo was bothering them. But, uh, you know, really after the first series, you know, Ole Miss only scores one more touchdown and after recovering a fumble inside the 10-yard line. So the defense, uh, look, second half the defense was, was fantastic. And, and the defense had as much to do with LSU winning tonight as, as Fournette. Brian, what did you think about that call, uh, uh, you know, a minute uh, 10 left on the 18-yard line going back to pass? Obviously, Maya Tehuma, Ole's on the block and forced to fumble. Did Ed uh, address that, and what did he say about it? No, he, he wasn't asked that. But, look, you, what you do right there, and I'm going to go with something with – I know Nick Saban does this all the time. You run the ball first. If you get a big run, sure. then you go to passing. You know, if you get the ball out – outside your yeah, three-yard that's line. What we said. Uh, if not, then you just run the clock out. Uh, and, and another reason is because Ole Miss is going to get the ball Third exactly the right. second half. Exactly. So you, you run the risk of, okay, you try to score and you don't. Yeah. Turn it over and you give an Ole Miss a chance for six and then they get the ball to start the second half and there's another chance for six. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I – if LSU was getting the ball to start the second half, I still wouldn't have gambled. I would have just said going into halftime with the with the lead. But uh, you know, if, if LSU is getting the ball, okay, maybe I can try a little bit. But you know, with the fact that Ole Miss is getting the ball in the second half, I would have played it very conservatively. Run the ball. If you get a big run out, then you can start thinking about passing. John David Moore got hurt first series. Uh, what's uh, his status and any other injuries of note? Uh, I, just the hurting, he had a stinger. You know, stinger? Yeah. So that, and uh, I don't think anybody else, uh, you know, nobody else came out. So they, they came out, but pretty healthy. It's funny, Len, uh Fournette said after the game, out, I, I'm out of shape. He says, uh, and it sounds like he's pretty close to 240 pounds right now. So he said he got winded tonight, and he obviously knows. He says he's going to have to work on his conditioning these, over these next couple weeks. Well, I saw him pull himself out of the game at, at one time. He did he that a couple times. Line. He did that a couple times. Yeah, times. I saw one, and I may have missed the others. But but he didn't get caught from behind on either of those two long runs. Same guy was ultimately chasing him at the end of it, and, and he kind of even looked back a little bit like, yeah, you, you don't have this. But uh, I think it was good to see Leonard Fournette do that. Uh, what, did he say anything about how his ankle may have felt? No, nah, no problem. He was just more concerned. I think tomorrow, lack of condition. Tomorrow he's probably going to be a little sore. A from getting hit for the first time in a month, and B running for 284 yards on what was a tender ankle. But the good thing there, Brian, is it's two weeks before they have to play again. Right. Exactly. And uh, look, he, he, this is what you saw tonight. In the, you know, Fournette was great. The passing game was efficient. You know, 68 percent completion, a little more than 200 yards. Uh, there was the one interception, which was a bad throw by Adling, and then the defense was dominant in the second half. And look, it's just like has been the case most of the times uh, in the recent years. You know, first Saturday in November, LSU has to beat Alabama to stay in to stay in the in the chase for the Western Division. And the three things that I just mentioned: for net running, an efficient passing game, and a dominant defense, that has to be there again. In two weeks, if LSU is going to have a chance to upset Alabama. Brian, what Coach O say about the turnovers? I know he wants to clean that up, but uh, overall, uh, 
Uh, what was his attitude? I know you said it was a great win, but uh, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't upset at all really about it. You know, he said the de- you know he, yeah you don't want to turn the ball over, and he said the defense had to get uh, straighten out a couple of problems early in the game. But he was pretty much he's pretty happy with with the team, so it wasn't. Uh, you know, he wasn't disturbed at all by the, uh, well, I guess you had Adling's two turnovers. We had a caller uh, also uh, ask about uh, Weathersby availability. I know he came back to practice. Um, you know, what do you think of the O-line play tonight? And, and is Weathersby possible to, to suit up and play against Bama? Well, I'm sure it will just, he's had, he, he'll, he'll, he will have two weeks, so I'm sure he can get better. Look, the offensive line, if you look at Fournette's three long touchdown runs, all downhill running, which the offensive line gave him a crease. He got through and then used his, his speed in, in the secondary. So I thought the offensive line was uh, was great. Just think of his first carry of the game. The first carry of the game, they made him do what? Turn his shoulders. And when he turns his shoulders to the sideline, he's not the same running back. And But on those three touchdown runs, he stayed square to the line of scrimmage with his shoulders all the way. He got the crease, he got through, and that was it. So uh, downhill running, to be an effective downhill runner, the offensive line has to really block. Atmosphere and crowd, did they stay in their seats a little bit longer, and what was it like uh, at kickoff, Brian? Uh, It was pretty good. I've heard it louder. Uh, I'm guessing I'd say the actual was somewhere in the 80,000, you know, 85, 80 to 85,000 range tonight. I'd say that was the actual. Maybe, I'd say it was at least 85. Uh, some people left at half, but nothing like it had been in uh, in recent weeks. Now, by the fourth quarter, you know, if, again, it, it started to empty out pretty good, but not as bad as it was uh, last week against USM. Brian Lazar, tell everybody what's happening at TigerBait.com, all the football stuff, and, of course, Basketball practice has begun, fall baseball. Give us the rundown on TigerBait.com. www.TigerBait.com. We'll have the uh, little quick uh, recap of the game coming up, video in a second. We'll have video of the interviews in the locker room. And uh, then the rewind and analysis and the grades tomorrow. Brian, uh, final thing here, uh, point spread, your p- opinion on the point spread and maybe – Two or three things LSU has to do to to be victorious uh, two weeks from tonight. Well, I think it'll be Alabama be a six or seven point favorite. Uh, and I just said a few minutes ago, Fournette's got to be dominant. You know, uh, the passing game has to be efficient, and the defense has to be has to also be uh, you know at the top of its game. And uh, all three of those things have to happen if they're going to beat Alabama, because this Alabama team may be better than the Alabama team which won the national championship last season. Yep. All right, Brian, thank, thank you, Brian. you so much. Okay, talk to you guys. Talk All right, enjoy the week. rest of the Sunday. How about this text message, message buddy? You and I figure that spread's going to be a little higher. Yeah. Well, hey, you asked him, he gave his answer. Yeah. That's fine. Here's a text message I want you to put this in your pipe and smoke. All you right. ready? This might be the ultimate optimism, okay? If you think about it, we're one interception – and one second away from being 7-0. and oh. Kind of a stretch. For the interception against Wisconsin is a reference there. And then if the play, the touchdown at the end of Auburn, if they get the snap off, and if both of those things happen, you still have less miles as the coach. Well, being that I attended that game at Green Bay, and it still is incredible that D.J. Chark was right there on the sidelines, but you still would have had to line up and kick the field goal to win that game. And then, of course, uh, the other thing with Auburn, let me tell you something. This Auburn football team that played LSU and the way they're steamrolling on offense, now you see what this LSU defense did that particular day to hold them to six field goals. Auburn's playing as well as anybody in the country they, on they offense. They smacked Arkansas on offense. today. And so, and uh, defense today. And, and Wisconsin but won Arkansas the Arkansas lost their quarterback in the game. Yeah, but, but, but no, they, they were dominant before. I right. mean, they, they, they put uh, a serious butt kicking on Arkansas. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is those two losses are not bad losses. Certainly don't look as bad now as they did when they first happened. Yeah, I would agree with that. 38-21, your final score. 
Phone lines are open, 225-928-4910. Text message line 504-689-9246. You can hear Buddy Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. I'm on WUBR. I follow him with Pelican Sports Radio from 3 to 5. Jordy Holberg in the morning at 7 a.m. Carlos Brown Saturday mornings at 10. We'll take a break. Come back. Phone calls, text messages, stats, and a whole lot more still to come. Ronnie Rance of Sports Shorts Radio, Sports Shorts TV, and Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Foundation. He's yeah. got too big of a title jumbo. now. Jumbo. Too big of a title. He's got a jumbo title now. Yeah, he does. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Acord Eye Clinic Vision Source is located on Perkins Road in Baton Rouge, offering full-service optical and lab work. Dr. Shonda Acord and the professionally trained staff pride themselves on service, complete eye exams, help with contact lenses, and selection of frames featuring Silhouette, Gucci, Jimmy Choo, and all the top lines. State-of-the-art equipment including Optimap, which digitally photographs your retina. Call Acord Eye Clinic for an appointment, 225-767-3937. That's 225-767-3937. Visit the website, visionsource-br.com. All patients of all ages are welcome. Acord Eye Clinic, Vision Source. Hello, my name is Debbie. Welcome to Debbie's Bridal of Formal Affair. Debbie's Bridal and she makes your dreams come true. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-383-8177. 800-383-8177. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling With the Pelican Sports Post Game Show, LSU 38, Ole Miss 21. We go back to Tiger Stadium and visit with Ronnie Rance of Sports Shorts Radio, Sports Shorts TV, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Foundation. He now has a jumbo title. How about that, Ronnie? Good evening. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> good morning, TK and Buddy. All right, uh, you visited with Dante Jackson uh, after the game. Uh, hopefully, you didn't drop a flag on him. What did he have to say? Yeah, I, he. But you know, it's funny. The whole time I interviewed him, he was touching me. So I don't know. Maybe uh, <laughs> got to break that habit. Um, no, he he talked about the defense. Obviously, they did a great job on Chad Kelly, the self-proclaimed best quarterback in the country. Just ask him, and they they really he, they thought the key was to 
keep him in the pocket and also put pressure on his face. And for the most part, they did a really good job of that. And uh, with the exception of, you know, some of those questionable calls, uh, LSU defense, you know, obviously for the third week in a row was phenomenal in the second half. Ronnie, you also visited with Leonard Fournette, a school record 284 yards on, on only 16 carries and three touchdowns. Uh, what did Leonard have to say after the game? Well, you know, it's funny. I've, this is the third year, obviously, that I've interviewed Leonard Fournette you know, being a junior, and he, he sometimes can be a, not a great interview because some, he just does, you know, he's not one that really enjoys the media all that much, and especially after a game where there's 50 media in his face. But you could tell – he was in a good spirit. He was uh, upbeat. Uh, he, he said, man, he was chomping at the bit to get back in there. Um, you know, he, he said, I'm not, a, I'm not healthy. I mean, I'm not 100%. He said, I'm still rehabbing, still got things to work on. I'm, I'm not, not 100% at all, he said. And, uh, but, you know, obviously he complimented his offensive line, and, and he said he was able to use the last three weeks off to – watch a lot of tape and, and, and kind of he was he said I was like an assistant running backs coach. You know, I was in the tent, probably spent more time in the meetings and and just uh, saw things from a different perspective and he, he thinks he helped him get get better. And he's not in game shape, uh, Ronnie. Uh, that that's one of the things I know he probably told you because uh, you know, you got a little rust and, and he'll certainly get uh, his body better, but uh, he didn't get caught and uh, I guess the question going forward here, Ronnie, is that you would think Leonard uh, has something to prove to himself after them shutting him down last year when he was right there in the thick of the Heisman race, uh, 31 yards on uh, however many carries. Uh, uh, could you could anybody talk about uh, next uh, two weeks from now, or he just uh, focus on tonight's uh, game? Well, you know, I did ask him if if the Alabama game was a game that you circle on the calendar, and he said he doesn't circle any games. Um, but they know that they know that it is a big game, but they don't put extra emphasis or different kind of preparation. He said, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll get to work and get after it. And you know, starting on Tuesday, Coach Ogeron said they'll start implementing the Alabama game plan, game plan at practice Tuesday, Wednesday. Then they'll give the guys off a few days. But you know, they they did. Uh, Coach Ogeron did say. Because uh, Ed Daniels made a point of saying, I think they've, LSU's outscored its opponent now 70-something to 7 in the second half of the last three games under Coach O. And what does he attribute to that? And he said he does think they've been fresher. He said, you know, he does think that they've uh, benefited from the, the shorter practices, the crisper practices, uh, you know, some of the scheme. But he said, and we've got some pretty good players too, you know. And uh, I think Leonard Fournette, I don't think you're going to see games, guys, where he carries the ball 30 times a game. I'm not saying there won't be one maybe that pops in there, but I think you're going to see 15 to 20 touches and guys get his ball, his, his handles as well, and, and that'll keep Leonard and, and LSU's offense fresh. Ronnie, you also talked to K.J. Malone. He's been getting better on the offensive line each and every week. What did K.J. Malone have to say? Well, K.J. talked about, you know, how banged up they are and, Guys playing a lot of different positions. You know that's a good thing and a bad thing. So the good thing is, you know, guys are having to, you know, pay a lot more attention to technique, and they're having to pay a lot more attention to the meetings because you really never know what position you're going to play based on the shuffle of the injuries. And, um, but he said it was nice having Leonard back. He said when you got guys like Leonard and Geis, you know, as an offensive lineman, if you do your job and you can you seal that hole, they're going to hit it so fast it's going to go big, and that that gives you a lot of confidence. The other thing is, I noticed, you know, Clapp left, you know, held his shoulder a couple times during the game, went out late. He's playing with either a torn or partially torn labrum in his shoulder, and uh, that's something to watch all year long. I, I don't, if you've got a torn labrum, as Tommy, you know, a baseball injury, that's not something that he's going to, you're going to have to shoot that up every game, and that's going to be a, a problem the rest of the year to you have surgery. Ronnie, a big topic in Baton Rouge uh, about a couple of weeks now, and, and certainly this, this week leading up to this game, about the fans who exited halftime or during the third, during the fourth quarter. Huge topic. Coach Orgeron even addressed it, kind of addressed it on his radio show Wednesday night. I know you got some comments about fans leaving the game early. You're down there on the sideline. You, you got a bird's eye view of how many people get out of there and how many stay. Well, there's no question, guys. You know, fans left early today, and you know it was a 17-point ball game, and and uh, you know it, was, it, it should have been worse than that. I mean, if LSU doesn't turn the ball over and I mean, LSU really dominated this game. It should have been like 49-10 or something like that, in my opinion. But, um, you know, it's, it's easy to say 
you know, why don't you stay? One, the game doesn't start to, what, 8-10, 8-15 kick, and then, I mean, it's over at 11-45 or whatever the case may be. You've been out there all day long tailgating. But the number one reason why, guys, that I'm okay with fans leaving early, I have no beef with it. You do what you want. You pay your dollars. You can do what you want. Is There's people still sitting in traffic and will be for the next two hours at least. Sure. Outside Tiger Stadium, and that's just inexcusable. And I don't remember, you know, buddy, back that long ago that uh, fifteen. Uh, the traffic wasn't that bad in the eighties and nineties and all that, and they had eighty, ninety, eighty thousand a game for big games. It just I don't remember it being gridlocked like it is now. Seems like the last five years, it's uh, it's really gotten uh, worse. And and when you have a competitive uh, well, game, well, that tells me there's more cars there. More cars, but the cops are staying watching the action. They're getting slow to their, their, to well, their, but you and, got you know the contra flow. People used seems, to carpool. They, they, but the contra flow, they change every year. It doesn't seem like they've come up with a good plan. But uh, Jumbo, my my final one to you tonight. Uh, you you watch a lot of ball. You saw Alabama earlier in the day. In your humble opinion, uh, what's this team have to do and clean up? To, to, to fast forward two weeks from now, and, and we're talking about a really close competitive game because Alabama, to me, just looks to be on a different level than everybody else. And then you say, wait a minute, college football, Penn State was a 20-point dog tonight. I know you and TK had the right side, but uh, <laughs> they did. beat Ohio State tonight uh, as a 20-point dog. So you, your opinion on how far LSU is from Bama and what they've got to do to, to pull the upset. Yeah, here, here's the thing about that, though, and you're right. I mean, it is college football. You can have those games where, you know, things bounce your way. LSU already had that one. That was in 2011. They won 9-6. to six. They missed five field goals. They got outgained by 100 yards, and they won the game. Um, those things don't happen all off. Penn State's not going to beat Ohio State, like, you know, once every 20 years with a game like this when they're out, man. Alabama should beat LSU, no question about it. But LSU's at home there in Tiger Stadium. It could go their way. How, if it's going to go their way, Danny Elling's going to have to play a sensational game. And I, you know, because they got to throw the ball in order to loosen the box, it's the same story as it yep. always is. Right. They know LSU wants to run, and that's their bread and butter. They're going to challenge LSU to throw the football. My concern is Elling's mobility. I, I think he's a vast improvement from Brandon Harris, but by no means is he in the, you know, a superstar. Uh, he's going to have to play the game of his life. Uh, and obviously you can't turn the football over. That goes without saying. It sure. doesn't matter who you play. Turnovers is even. But he, Danny Etling's got to play the game of his life so that LSU has a chance to run the football. Ronnie, uh, three-part question. Tell us about Sports Shorts TV, Sports Shorts Radio, and the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Foundation. Well, uh, Sports Shorts TV, Mondays at 9, Tuesdays at 8, right here on Pelican Broadcasting each and every week. And then uh, Sports Shorts Radio, myself, Buzzy Heidel, Joel Davis, Monday, 6 to 8 on ESPN Radio in Baton Rouge. Check us out. And then uh, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. I saw uh, Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer Archie Manning and Burt Jones. They were on the field today getting honored. Uh, Burt Jones going into the College Football Hall of Fame. But they're already in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. It's good to see both of them today. Uh, go check it out. The museum's up in Natchitoches. It's worth the drive. 245 from Baton Rouge to get there. And it's a beautiful Hall of Fame up in the, up in a beautiful city. Ronnie, you have a good rest of the Sunday day. It's booty time. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. All right. All right. Of course, Josh hey. Booty with him on Monday is a great segment with him and Joel. And you listen to him, and obviously uh, they do the TV here. We'll take a break. Then we'll come back. Uh, we got some text messages to answer. We got one more segment you can squeeze a call in if you want to. LSU 38, Ole Miss 21. We're back after this pause. Stay with us. Cypress Lake Apartments are conveniently located off Segan Lane in Baton Rouge. Come see this community, which has many amenities including swimming pools, fitness room, playground, and much more. Beautiful views of Cypress Lake. One, two, three bedroom apartments are available. Stop by and see Cypress Lake Apartments. Give them a call at 225-293-6789 or visit online cypresslake-apartments.net. Don't let bugs bug you anymore. Call the bug man today. And for termite protection, go green with Centricot. If it's good enough for Lady Liberty and the White House, then it's good enough for you. Eliminate the colony and eliminate termites for good. Call 923-BUGS today. 
Creel Tree Service is a licensed and insured tree service providing tree and stump removal, topping, trimming, cabling, pruning, and fertilizing. We have free stump removal with takedowns, free estimates, affordable rates, and senior citizens discounts. Call 774-TREE. That's 774-8733. Get your yard ready for the warmer weather. If it deals with a tree, call me, Creel Tree Service, 774-8733. That's 774-TREE. Friends, family, and community in surrounding parishes who have lost vehicles due to the flood. North American Auto Group is here to help. We have discounted over 400 pre-owned vehicles with no water damage. In addition, we have lenders offering disaster relief financing programs. We will also help you with your insurance and gap claims. Shop online at NorthAmericanAutoGroup.com or visit us at one of our four locations in Baton Rouge and Gonzales. North American Auto Group, we make it easy. Since 1986, the family dental practice of Dr. Farrell Frugier with state-of-the-art building and technology and our highly trained staff have been dedicated to providing care and treatment to our patients of all ages. The experience and advanced training in cosmetic and restorative dentistry, TMJ, and treatment of snoring and sleep apnea allows Dr. Frugier to assist you in achieving the best in dental health. Call us today at 225-292-9700 to schedule your initial evaluation because we know how to make you smile. Pelicans Sports Post Game Show. We appreciate uh, Brian Lazard, Ryan Rams joining us uh, with their reports from Tiger Stadium. Question mark here, buddy. Hey, guys, really enjoyed the show. Thank you for that. Uh, the tight ends are being used much more by the present coaching staff than in the past three or four years. Uh, your comments on that? It's just so nice. You didn't see Deshaun Smith catch anything tonight, but um, Jeter did, and uh, Jeter caught a couple balls. And 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 look, it's a safe route, and it looks, uh, you know, that's one of the things that everybody's enjoyed, TK, about Danny Etlin. He does go to his second and third progression reads uh, when his first primary receiver is covered, or or uh, and and look, he had pressure tonight and got out and and made some good throws. He also had some pressure in and overthrew and, and, and had uh, an INT. Uh, as we said, got to clean up the turnovers, but you gotta, I don't think people realize this. Uh, the guy's only started like four games. I mean, he's coming along each week. And uh, Colin Jeter had two catches tonight for 21 yards. Malachi Dupree led the way with five catches for 52 yards. Doral, four catches. He kind of been in hiding lately. Yep. Four for 48. Shark, another touchdown. Shark, three for 35 and a touchdown. The, the one touchdown, he was wide open. Fournette out the backfield. Couple Fournette catches. had uh, three catches for 25 yards. And, and I mentioned Jeter. Williams had a catch. Geis had a catch. Uh, again, Fournette, 16 for 284. Geis, 16 for 57. Uh, Time of possession. What was that like? Oh, you would ask me that, huh? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I just got to click this button right here, and I can tell you the time possession was 32-13 for LSU, 27-47 for Ole Miss. Again, LSU with 515 yards offense, Ole Miss 325. LSU six penalties, Ole Miss four. Three turnovers for LSU, two for Ole Miss. First downs virtually even, 20-19 to 19, LSU with a Slight edge there on third down. LSU four out of 11, five out of 15 for Ole Miss. So uh, that's kind of a look at those stats right there for you. You asked for the time. In inside the red zone also is going to be important. If you watched Alabama and Texas A&M, Texas A&M is a a approved appreciably with Coach Davis in year two over there. But you got to stop Alabama from scoring touchdowns and maybe limit the field goals. But once again, TK, two weeks to get ready. And you know this is going to be one incredible uh, crescendo it, It's going to be a tough ticket. Tough ticket. And usually it's not a tough ticket. Like today, they were giving away tickets like crazy a uh, half hour before the game. I don't know that that will be the case no, in two no. weeks. Uh, again, we expect Monday it will be announced that it will be a 7 o'clock kickoff primetime CBS. And uh, I'll be surprised if it's not that. But we'll wait till Monday when they say for sure. We do have to get our final break in. We'll uh, knock uh, off the phone lines. You can still text if you want. And then we'll come back and Buddy and I will put a wrap on it with some final comments. Once again, the Tigers win 38-21 over the Ole Miss Rebels. Nice win for Coach Ed Orgeron. He won't say it, but a little something inside of him. He's glad to beat the Rebels, having been the head coach there for three years, albeit 
about 10 years ago. Buddy Sanji, Tommy Chrysan, you're watching Pelican Sports TV, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans. Listening, uh, if you're in the traffic jam, we got us on the smartphone, WUBR. 9:10 a.m. CBS Sports Radio affiliate in Baton Rouge. Don't forget, TV repeats Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. and 10:30. If you're out and about, you can get up Sunday morning and check it out. And then sometime later Sunday, uh, it'll be on the YouTube page, youtube.com/slash Pelican Broadcast. And we got the post-game show there. We've got the Tigers Roar each week, so you can watch it at your convenience. Sports shorts, rapping with BK, lots of other things at youtube.com slash pelican broadcasting final break we'll come back and put a wrap on it buddy signed you tommy christ saying stay with us Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Perkins Road Veterinary Hospital is a full-service veterinary hospital committed to your pet's health. We offer advanced diagnostic and therapeutic medical services, laser surgery, dog and cat diets, and treats along with stress-free boarding. Dr. Ritchie sees patients for routine checkups to keep your loved ones happy. Also, advanced medical and surgical cases. We have separate condos for cat boarding and large climate-controlled canine boarding. Our boarding dogs get to have fun in a very large play yard several times a day. Laser therapy is a service that we offer to heal wounds and help our patients that suffer from chronic pain. Laser therapy is a wonderful adjunct treatment for neurologic and arthritic pain with no side effects. Your pets are family members and deserve the best and highest quality of care. Dr. Ritchie and his staff greatly respect the human-animal bond and are committed to exceeding your expectations. My name is Dr. Nicole Rogers and I'm here in Old Metairie, Louisiana at Hair Restoration of the South where your hair is our care. And I'd like to invite you to come and visit and discuss various options for treatment of thinning hair. These can include both medical and surgical options. You don't have to go straight to surgery. In the meantime, feel free to check out our website, hairrestorationofthesouth.com and we look forward to seeing you soon. LSU wins 38-21. Ole Miss will fall out of the polls. LSU will climb a notch or two or three. Because, buddy, there was some uh, ranked teams, a couple of them in the top ten that went down today, starting with Ohio State. We appreciate everybody hanging in there with us. You know, we were talking about waking up, and, and you start watching those 11 o'clock games. Louisville put it all over uh, NC State today. Lamar, Lamar Jackson was another big day. Jackson once again. Now look, Leonard Fournette. Heisman front runner. Well, Leonard Fournette was winning it and, and, and the front runner last year at this time. We'll see what Jackson does. He won't play that gauntlet that uh, Leonard had to play in uh, November. Wisconsin wins again today, 17-9 to over Iowa. Pretty good ball club for Mark, Chris, and uh uh, They're the a little better than some people thought. Yep. Uh, Texas A&M uh, took the lead against Alabama 14-13, and then Bama proceeded to score 20 straight at the end. They prevailed 33-14. How good are the bookmakers? 18 and a half, I think, was the final yeah. number, and it ends 19. Ohio State, in case you missed it, uh, Urban the Crier Meyer. He's crying tonight. Uh, He's probably going to have to retire again. You saw how they won the game. A blocked field goal, picked it up and ran it in. Penn State with the whiteout and the great crowd wins 24-21. Uh, 
uh, a barn burner here, uh, TK. Oklahoma defeats this, this is Texas a basketball Tech. score, though. They didn't play football. They played 66 basketball. 66 to 59. 66-59. Stoops football. and the Sooners. LSU wins by 17, 38 to 21. By the way, in case you missed it, uh, an opponent for LSU down the road right after Alabama, Arkansas. Whoa, man. Got skull drunk I, think, I today. don't think they realized they had a game today. 56 to 3, and they gave up over 500 yards of rushing yardage. Auburn, hey, I was wrong. Kevin Steele has been a good fit over there defensively, and Gus Malzahn, uh, remember uh, the two coaches, the three coaches on the hot seat this year? Kevin Sumlin at A&M, first loss now. Uh, Gus Malzahn at Auburn, really playing well right now. And Les Miles, of course, who lost his, his job after four games. But uh, well, uh, those two teams, let's Auburn. Let's just say this. Arkansas, two weeks ago, lost their best running back. Today, their quarterback was knocked out of the game. I, I'm not saying that would have made any difference today because Auburn surely clocked them. But, uh, you know, LSU can worry about that in Fayetteville the week after Bama because it's an open date. Uh, we heard uh, Brian Arani say the guys are going to work out Tuesday and Wednesday, and Coach O's going to give them a couple of days off, and then they'll go full speed probably starting next Sunday and get ready for Alabama. I think it's going to be a tough ticket. It's going to be a packed campus, a packed town, a packed South Louisiana. You know Bama's going to bring a lot of fans. The number one team in the nation usually does do that. And uh, Jerry Springer will probably be film filming right before the game. For an Who? Alabama show, Jerry Springer. Do they? Oh, all those Alabama people, uh, they're part of that show. Uh, they'll come in here. They'll come in here it's with that. I tell you what, it'll be a wild and crazy by Thursday, Friday, they Saturday. They will come in here with that arrogant, uh, you know, <coughs> attitude. <coughs> but to the victor go the spoils. And, and TK, as uh, you and I were watching, and Alan and everybody else, uh, Bama does get a lot of calls early. Uh, boy, Dante Jackson, now you know they're going to pick on him after three Passing and finish They're going to him and Tolliver. And Tolliver. So, uh, the LSU uh, pass defense will have to be key that night. It's going to have to be because i got to believe little Lane Kiffin's going to throw it up in the air a, a bunch and then run it. And got to tackle. Got to tackle in between the tackles. Alabama's going to want to run it downhill. But uh, listen. Well, they uh, asked Coach John Chavis if he could ask for one thing during the Bama game. He said, we don't want any missed tackles. If we, we get a body on somebody, we got to get them on the ground. LSU might want to take that same deal. No missed tackles against Bama. But, uh, look, 3-0 uh, and o since Coach O took over, and uh, I think there is some substance to these games of being a little bit more enjoyable. They're utilizing more talent. They're more, playing more players, and they're putting the guys in a better position to win. It's not so predictable with the, the toss back. But, you know, Les had to be happy tonight because they tossed it back to Leonard and Geis a few times, and there was some successful plays there. So Les even had to feel good about tonight's game. Well, we appreciate everybody on the TV and radio and Maybe you're still in traffic, maybe not. Staying up late with us as we push past 1 a.m. here on the post-game show. Uh, appreciate the calls, a lot of text messages tonight. We appreciate Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com. Ronnie Rance with the Jumbo title, Sports Shorts Radio, Sports Shorts TV, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Foundation. I mean, he's got to get something shorter here, huh? And, of course, always, uh, buddy, we, we appreciate you and staying up late tonight. Didn't have one yawn doing Nothing the show. Nothing happened to you. I thought midnight might be bad news for you. I, I had no problem staying up. I guess, uh, you know, these LSU games keep you going. But uh, we will do radio all week long, and then it's going to be one heck of a buildup for LSU-Bama. LSU probably about number 20 in the polls this week. On behalf of everybody at Pelican Broadcast, we thank you. Pro Broadcasting, we thank you for watching and listening. Buddy Sanji, Tommy Christ saying, Tigers win 38-21.